four and a half years ago, I came to this exact location to film a gentleman's Jeep Wrangler that had been built for overlanding and I thought it was really cool and I got the opportunity to meet now my best friend Marco Hernandez and we came out here and filmed his Jeep and just realized very quickly that we had the same adventure spirit and the same values in life and since then we have had amazing adventures in that JK of his and well he's upgraded. Now he's got a Jeep Wrangler 392 and he has built this thing to a whole new level and today in this video we're going to meet with Marco and we're going to take a look at his brand new Jeep Wrangler. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon. I'm Brad. And I'm Marco from Overland X. And today we're going to give you a tour of Marco's brand new Jeep Wrangler 392. Brother, I'm feeling totally nostalgic today, being up here again uh, with your amazing Jeep. Can you believe it's been four and a half years? Four and a half years, man. We, we have done a lot in four and a half years yeah. since the very first time we met. The very first time Marco and I met was right here. Uh, I reached out to you and I said, hey, I want to film your Jeep. Do you mind? Can we do that? That was awesome. It, that was, was, yeah. it was a great day and we just got, to, I mean, we spent a couple hours up here just talking and chatting. And, and, and then we plan on doing trips Yeah. and we've done amazing trips, man. We talk about Baja, yeah. it's been in several trips to Baja. Yeah. It's been amazing. Moab, Colorado. Yeah. A lot of memories uh, have been made just because we met right here at this spot. Now, uh, that JK has taken you on some awesome adventures, yes. but uh, you and I had the opportunity uh, in Moab this, this year to drive the 392 before it came out to the market. And before, I mean, you were smiling, <laughs> you were smiling all day long. And before we finished that drive, because we were out on the trail with uh, Nina Barlow and the, all those guys, you said, Brad, I'm getting one of these. Yes, yes. The following day, I called Charlie from Redlands. I said, Charlie, order a white one for me, please. Oh, yeah. Dude, it, done, right? Done. Why the 392? It's such a fun vehicle. I mean, that, all that power is that what is what you need on an overland vehicle. Man. <laughs> I can pull the trailer and it doesn't care. Yeah. It just goes. Let's be honest. You're just a hot rod guy at heart. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I try not to. I can't. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, dude, uh, listen, hearing you come up this morning uh, with that exhaust, which is an aftermarket exhaust, which we will talk about, uh, I was like, oh, I, I know he's smiling this morning just <laughs> driving that thing. Okay. I, I, we're going to get into the specifics about everything you've done here in a minute. But I know that when you bought your JK, you really didn't have, I think, the idea that it was going to be this massive overland build. So was, you were kind of learning as you went. I, I didn't know anything about overlanding. Yeah. And I learned when I was building that Jeep. And uh, yeah, that's how what happened. Now, when you got this one, though, you knew right away kind of what you wanted to do. What, what was your vision going into this? I wanted to build something different because I learned from the JK. Yeah. And I wanted to build something different. Make it look different than the JK. Yeah. I wanted a different build. But I wanna, I wanted, you know, a, a real overlander yeah. with all the power, with all the uh, amenities, You're right? And capability. This thing's capability. super yeah. capable. Uh, but there's no doubt you can go do some long trips uh, oh, yeah. on this, and we can still go have some fun on the rocks yep. and stuff. So, awesome, well, guys. There are a lot of very cool details on this Jeep. What do you say? Should we uh, get into it? Let's do it. All right, dude. You're always <laughs> smiling. <laughs> I'm touching the keys, I get smiled. smile. Dude. <laughs> How can you not smile? Okay, uh, let's talk about the base model Jeep. What do we have? I got the 392, which is a 6.4 Hemi. 470, 470 horsepower. horsepower. 470 foot-pounds of torque. Right. And um, the this is the basic model, which has everything. There's, yeah. There are no, no other upgrades. No, it's anything. pretty much fully loaded. It's yes. got painted fenders, painted top. But this is not the recon model. No, right? it doesn't come with the, that extra lift and the 35s. Right. It came with 33s. Yeah, we'll talk about wheels and tires because yeah. you've already upgraded those. <laughs> uh, the engine is stock. Yeah. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you don't need to do anything to it, right? You don't need to. I mean, can you imagine supercharging that thing? Oh, no, well, forget so, it. Somebody's going to no, do it eventually. It, a Jeep is not for that. It, yeah. You know, it, Okay, uh, let's talk about some of the upgrades you've done up here on the front. And I think, let's let's talk about the bumper, man, because I love this thing. I, I, I saw this at Overland Expo for the first time in person, and I was like really blown away. Talk about the bumper. This is the ARB Bondi Deluxe. Okay. They make it in a stubby model, 
but I wanted the deluxe, which is the full the full bumper. Yeah, it looks really good. It's got all the, the, the three inch bull bar here. You can put your uh, your lights, yeah. your antennas in the front, like the right. Aussie way. Yeah, and uh, I, I like the way it looks. Yeah. it's pretty pretty clean. So it is steel. It's steel. And coming all the way out, you get that uh, little extra protection, yes. right? Which is nice. Um, and this, guys, this thing is so beefy uh, up here. I mean, and I love the curves. It's not like these hard lines. No. It's really kind of smooth because if you look at the Jeep, the Jeep is smooth lines, yes. right? It's not really harsh lines. So I think it fits really well. Now. Uh, what lights are these mounted up on here? These are the KC Flex R4. Yeah. I got a set of spotlights and a set of uh, combo. Yeah, and these things are ridiculous. bright. So bright. <laughs> yes. I have these on the truck. They are ridiculously bright. bright. And you got the amber covers on there, which is nice. Yes. Okay. Uh, and I also have the fog lights. They're also from KC. Yeah. Are those amber as well? Or are those They're white? amber. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Okay. And then the bumper has the built-in bracket for for your antennas, which you talked about, but I think that's a really good idea because having the antennas out front keeps it away from all the other metal and obstructions and you get a lot of good clarity out here. With oh this. yeah, a lot. It's a, there's a lot. it's got the same setup as my JK, but my JK doesn't perform that well because yeah. the antennas are close to the roof yeah. rack. Yeah, so this, uh, this is your ham antenna right here. That's my ham antenna and I got the uh, uh, GMRS. A little stubby, stubby from Midland, right? From Midland. Okay. And uh, Marco, there's no winch on this Jeep. <laughs> no winch. <laughs> no winch. Um, it, a worn winch is gonna go in there okay. pretty soon. All right. Um, I just don't have it yet. But the bumper already comes with the winch uh, plate. Okay. So that's a that's great because that's uh, an extra accessory that I don't have to buy. Yeah. No, that'll look good. And the, and the, and the winch is recessed into the bumper, so you're yes. not gonna lose a lot of clearance because right. you need to keep this thing cool. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, light bar up the top. What do you got up there? Is the Pro Six from KC. Okay. Uh, I love those lights. Those yeah. are, they're bright. Yeah. And they look pretty they awesome. Look, they look really good. Now, the mount you were telling me, that's not factory yet. Right. The 392 and the Mojave model, they uh, have the same hood, which is a little higher. Yeah. It's raised in the back. So the regular brackets for the JL won't fit. Okay. Um, so Casey's already working on it. Yeah. But I modify that. Uh, a friend of ours, yeah. Chula Vista, uh, he helped me modify it. Right. And, uh, so it works it, pretty good. It works pretty good. Now, the hood uh, of the uh, 392, if you guys are not familiar with it, is really, I mean, it's functional for bringing air in, but also for the water passage. There's like this way that the water can pass through in case, I guess, wind. Yeah. <laughs> it would go through a river or something. It's, it's called a hydro guide yeah. from Jeep, and it's basically your snorkel. Yeah. You know, this. This engine wants to breathe, right? And uh, this system will separate water from air, yeah. so your wa the water goes back in the, the back of the engine, and yeah. the air goes to the engine. Yeah. When they showed us that demo, I was like blown away. Yeah. I was like, that was pretty cool. Oh, That's yeah. pretty cool. All right, uh, can we pop the hood? I know there, there you haven't done any engine mods, but I want to show some of the wiring and stuff. Oh, absolutely. Done. Okay. Okay. I I know that uh, the highlight of this thing is the engine, but it's all stock. But what I wanted to share with folks uh, is the wiring that you've done on this thing because when you sent me the pictures uh, after you had finished this, I was blown away. This looks so factory. Can you talk a little bit about uh, you know, what you did here, what you used, and then when we get in the interior, we'll talk more about all that stuff. But we needed to get power outside, inside, because there's some stuff to power. Yes. But what, what, were you, what was going on in your head when you did this? When I did the JK, it's not close to this. It's yeah. just, it's not as clean as this. And, and I wanted to do that. I wanted to, you know, learn from that and do something cleaner. Um, as a matter of fact, I, it was a Saturday and I did that uh, all day long working on the wiring but I wasn't happy with it. And my wife goes like, well, you spent all day working on that. What are you gonna do tomorrow? I said, I'm gonna remove it and redo everything again. So, so you pulled it all apart yes. and started all over? Yes, I did. Well, I wasn't happy with it. Uh, dude, it looks good. T tell so, us what you've got going on. So I got, everything is fused and I got waterproof relays for the ARB link system. Okay. I used four gauge wire. Okay. From, direct from the battery to uh, fuse blocks. Okay. okay. I got a fuse for the ARB uh, twin compressor. Okay. A fuse for the Red Arc system. Okay. And a fuse for the Link system. All right. So I got three fuses. They come from a four gauge to a eight and ten gauge. Okay. And that goes inside the vehicle. Okay. So that's super important to talk about, right? Because if you're going to run wire uh, for like six to ten feet, 
Right. You, you can't use small gauge wire, and so that's why it's important to use that heavy wire up to here, right? Right, and then you separate the wires. Like for example, the ARB link system, it doesn't need more than 10 gauge. Okay. So I got 10 gauge here, and for the compressor, I got eight gauge. Right. And for the red arc, eight gauge also. Yeah. What, where did you get these fuses? Because those look clean. I mean, look so nice. Are these just off of Amazon or? They're just off of Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Th this is for a sound system. <laughs> well, it looks good. Yeah. And, and now what about the plate? Uh, it's an aluminum plate that I found on my shed. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just something you had yeah, lying around. I just clean it then. Uh, dude, it looks so good. And we'll talk more about um, the link system and the red arc system when we get inside. But I wanted you guys to see just how good this wiring looks. I think it's super important uh, to make sure that when you wire a vehicle, uh, you know, this is the next level, but I think at least making sure that you're using the right gauge wire and that you're keeping things clean and simple like this is perfect. So, all right, you ready to talk uh, tires and suspension? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, before we talk about wheels and tires, you have personalized this Jeep so well with these graphics. Can you talk about what you did? Mark from Elevate Designs in Phoenix, he did the, a partial wrap on the Jeep. He used the topo, the different colors yeah. that, I, that I like. Uh, I think he did a great job. It looks, it looks amazing. Yeah, it looks really good. I mean, he put your Overland X logo on the yeah. hood and then integrated the bronze that matches the 392 bronze and even the light covers he did. And then the trailer to match it. <laughs> it's I a mean, whole different trailer. Now. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. It's, there's no doubt this is your Jeep coming down the road. <laughs> and I think that's what's so cool about doing stuff like this is you personalize your, your vehicle yes. and it's becomes your vehicle, you know, Absolutely. it looks so good. Uh, it's awesome. Okay. Wheels and tires. Okay. Uh, what do we got? I'm on 35s right now. Okay. I uh, will go to 37s eventually. Okay. <laughs> you heard it. You heard it here. Yeah. <laughs> so these are the Milestar Patagonia XTs. It's not as aggressive as the MT, but it's a great tire. I really like this tire on the road. It, uh, they're mounted on fuel off-road warp. These are real beadlocks. Okay. The trailer also has the warp, but it's not the beadlock. It's the regular. Okay. Warp but wheel. they look the. They almost look the same. Yeah. And the bronze. And the, they're bronze. Come on. <laughs> it looks good. So these wheels have a little more offset to manage that 12 and a half. So you're not running spacers you're or anything running back there. Not running spacers at all. Okay. Uh, down below, have you done anything with the axles? No, they're stock axles. Okay. Uh, it's the latest generation Dana 44. Yeah. So the the 392 comes with a beefier axle yes. already, um, and this is all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive. How do you like that? I, I love it. Yeah. It, it, you know, it feels different, and and I understand now why they did that. You know, that all that power it needs to go somewhere. <laughs> yeah. It's better to go to two axles. Right. If it went straight to the back, you'd be blowing up yeah. differentials and everything. Right. Okay. Uh, let's talk about suspension. So, look, the suspension that came with the 392 out of the box was pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, but you wanted to go taller for some extra clearance. What did you do? I went with uh, TerraFlex, the CT3 four-inch okay. lift and got the new arms, the IR okay. arms. I, I love the suspension. I, I've always liked Terraflex. Yeah. I got Terraflex on my other Jeep. Right. And uh, that's why I went to the CT3. Okay, and the shocks you're running are fully adjustable. They're fully adjustable. They're Fal Falcon 3.3s yeah. adjustable. And yeah, they're great. Yeah, I think that's the key, right? Is, is this When you have an overland vehicle, especially one that's carrying weight and a trailer, yeah. To be able to dial in those shocks yep. uh, is is really important. I mean, like I said, the suspension that comes on this, the shocks were pretty nice, but they're not adjustable. They're not adjustable. And now you can adjust for the weight and the terrain that you're going to be going yes. on. Yeah. So, awesome, dude. Uh, and, and when you have 470 horsepower, you, you, want, you want a firm suspension on the road. <laughs> right? Hmm. How fast you going, buddy? <laughs> you won't go... No, no. Well, let's not talk about it. Oh, and that's right. You can't take it. It won't go over 99 miles an hour. It won't go hour. over 99. And maybe, maybe not. You know that for a fact. Uh, Under Armour, what have you done underneath? I got the Next Venture skid plate. Okay. It's an aluminum skid plate. It goes all the way to, from the front to the back, and it also covers the exhaust. Oh, that's nice. Pretty, pretty cool. Okay. And you've done something custom with the exhaust, which we'll talk about yes. in the back. Now, uh, you still run in the stock rock rail. I am. You think that's going to stay? Uh, no, I, I want more protection. And I would like to have something where I can step on. Okay, yeah, to kind of help you get up yeah. there a little bit. Uh, and then uh, axle shafts are stock, differential stock. covers are stock, but stock. maybe down the road when you go uh, bigger tires. I want to do some ARB uh, diff covers. Okay. 
maybe black with the bronze. Uh, <laughs> some custom I like there. your way of thinking. I like your way of thinking. Okay, let's uh, let's hop over and talk about what you've got going on on the roof, and then we can go around to the back. All right. Okay, you have done a lot of great stuff to the roof already. Uh, I have not seen uh, this rack mounted on anybody else's Jeep before, just yours. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, this is the ARB base rack. Okay. It's uh, fully aluminum welded one piece. Oh, wow. Um, it's pretty light yeah. and you can see it's pretty low profile. Yeah, really like low profile. That's very nice. Uh, how is it mounted to the roof? Um, it's got a quarter inch plate that, that sits on the front roll bar okay. and a support bar in the back. Okay, so no worries then handling rooftop tent and all kinds of gear up Not there. Not at all. You yeah, awesome. Uh, and speaking of rooftop tent, uh, what do you got up there? I got a James Beirut Explorer. Okay. I, I love that tent. Yeah. You know, that the mattress is super comfortable. It's so good. And I like this one because it's got the 360 degree view. Yeah. It's awesome. So it opens straight up. Yep. Uh, and then, yeah, you've got all. Everything of, opens up. Yeah. Easy to open and close. Yes. Makes it nice for when we're just rolling out early in the morning. There's not a lot of work to do. Uh, hard shell is the way to go. And it has a little pocket in the top for storage too, right? It does. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. So if we do a, like an extra long trip or something, you could always you could put a bag up there, yeah. you know, strap it up there. And yeah. nice. Uh, and you've got some lights mounted here on the side and the rear. What do you got? These are Casey's uh, scene lights. Okay. Uh, these are pretty nice. These are LEDs. They're bright. Yeah. They're bright. And it's just nice when we roll up to camp to be able to, I mean, look, we, we get to camp in the dark <laughs> yeah, once in a while it happens uh, to be able to light up camp and to see where you're going. Uh, you know, as yeah. we're looking for a camp spot on the side to turn those lights on, it's pretty nice. Uh, and then you have the chase light in the back. I got the 28 inch uh, chase light from uh, KC. Yeah. And I did connect everything to the Jeep. So the turn signals work, the stoplight works. And all the wires for the, for the lights, I brought them inside the roof rack into a gland, a wire gland that goes inside the Jeep. Yeah. yeah. The, the chase light is really nice, um, especially when we're out in the desert and there's a lot of dust. Yes. I, I like the amber feature because those amber lights are up high and sometimes that's all yep. you can see is just, the, I can't see the vehicle, but I can see those amber those lights. Amber lights yeah. yeah. Well, nice. Having all those lights up there, uh, it makes it very nice. Now, one other thing is on the other side is the awning. What awning do you have? That thing's super awesome. It's the James Beirut Falcon 270, Okay. but it's got the uh, tunnel system. Okay. So I can go up the rooftop tent through a tunnel. Oh, come on, man. With the awning open. You're like a little kid with a Jeep fort. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like you got a little tunnel going up into your rooftop well, tent? Well, yeah, because it's got the walls. Yeah. So you got an outside room. Okay. And you don't have to go out. You just come down that tunnel uh, and you're in the, in the room. That's super cool, man. What a great design. Uh, that's awesome. You don't see a lot of that with hard shell tents. That no. makes it nice to be able yes. to use your awning and to have your tent uh, accessible. That's, that's a great fit. Awesome. Well, what do you say... Uh, we go to the rear, we talk about your vroom, vroom, exhaust back there, <laughs> and then uh, and then start talking about the interior where that's some cool stuff inside. All right. Okay, before we talk about the rear and the trailer, come on, what a beautiful day. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, there's a trail right there, the mountains. We need to hurry up and film this so we can go explore, dude. Okay, uh, what, uh, what do you got going on in the back of the Jeep? I got the Terraflex HD tire carrier. Okay. It's an aluminum tire carrier. It's pretty light, but it's super strong. Yeah. It'll hold up to a 39 inch tire. Okay. And then I got the next venture uh, skid plate for the exhaust system. Yeah. And let's uh, talk about the exhaust system because you just got this put yes, on. What yes. did you get? Magnaflow. Okay. It's a prototype for the 392 right now. They already have it for the 392. Yeah. But this is a different uh, model because of the uh, next venture uh, skid plate. Okay. Now this still allows you to use what I call the fun button. Yes. Right. It's got the valves. Yeah. Uh, to go into performance mode. Yeah. And how's it sound? Can we pause for a second and let them hear this? Absolutely. Here you go, guys. This is what it sounds like. Okay, uh, buddy, that sounds so good. <laughs> All right, uh, now you're towing a trailer. You and I have both been towing a trailer for a while now. Uh, this is actually the X2, Patriot Campers X2 yes. that I had for a while. Does not look anything uh, <laughs> like I, when I had it. Uh, what have you done in the back to make it uh, tow this guy? I put a longer hitch yeah. uh, mount. That way I can clear the, the rear gate. Yeah, so that was a challenge, right? Is, is 
this actually has a pretty short tongue on it, yes. and so opening your tire was a challenge, so you just extended that hitch a little yes. bit to make that easier. Perfect. Yes. And what else did you do? You did wire this up. I did uh, put wires to charge the Red Arc system yeah. battery from the Jeep. Yeah. So when I'm running, it's, it's charging the battery. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, now, you have put solar on top uh, of the trailer as well. What did you put up there? It, it's a 200 watt uh, Red Arc. Uh, Flat panel. Okay. Right there. Yeah, 200 watts. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you're pretty much base camp forever and it's going to be fine unless it's yes. raining for several days. Yes. And you've got some more storage up here as well. I know that um, you love cooking. And so, how has the trailer kind of helped with that? Oh, I, I can't go without a trailer anymore. <laughs> no, that's my that's my rolling kitchen. Yeah. And I got everything there. I got a, a seven three quart ARB fridge. Yeah. It was just a freezer in a fridge. So. Massive. Massive. But then having that full table set up, your stove, you can all set that everything. room to work on. Right. Um, yeah. It, it's yeah. It, it's the way to go. Yeah, I I love it. I think it works perfect for you. Um, but you still have more fridge and more storage in the back because look, I mean, you're, you're cooking some big meals and uh, and you don't like to, you know, there's no mountain meals in your trips. No, so I like you, to bring everything yeah. that we're gonna need. Even if I don't use it, yeah. thing, you know, it's there. Yeah, well, let's uh, let's open the back of the Jeep and let's show them uh, what you've done in the back too. This is where it's gonna get really good, guys. All right, buddy. There's a lot of cool things back here. Let's just, uh, let's just work our way around. What do you got over there? I got the Outback Adventures Trail Gator. Yeah. Check this out. I love this thing. It's got a magnetic. Oh, that's cool. Dude, look at that cleaver. That's a heck of a knife too, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, that tailgate table is, it's perfect. Uh, I've had mine for, I don't know, three or four years. Yeah. You too. You've had your the one on your JK for a long time. Forever. It's a great table. Does it rattle? It doesn't it's rattle. Awesome. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay. Uh, you didn't build your own drawer system this time. So yeah. you did on your JK and you were pretty proud of that. Why didn't you build your own this time? Um, I've been using this product for a long time yeah. and I know how to use it, I know how to cut it, but it, I didn't save money on the JK, honestly. It took me forever to yeah. build it. it. It took a long time right. and it's a lot heavier. It's heavier. Um, these guys, they already have it. You yeah. know, they have it cut to size, and and they got they use the right material yeah. for it. So yeah, that's why I went with Goose Gear. Yeah, I mean, building stuff your own is, is cool, but I mean, it, there there's some kind of balance that has to be made between how much is your time worth, yeah. uh, and and you know, having something that's lighter uh, yeah. and is just ready to go, and now you can spend your time doing other stuff like rewiring your <laughs> undercarriage, yeah. right? So uh, I think that's pretty cool. So what did you what did you install? You got the the goose gear plate system. I got the goose gear plate system, which is the 60. Yeah. I kept one of the seats. One of the seats, okay. My granddaughter's. <laughs> and uh, I got the two drawer okay. system. And this drawer right here, I have my sleeping bag and my my uh, uh, quilt. Okay. And, and up here, I just have lenses and wires and things that I need for, for my photography. Okay, and then you've got a cool little charging station on the top. What did you do there? Well, I got a 2000 watt inverter yeah. that is connected to the Red Arc system. And I put uh, battery chargers for my drone and my cameras. See. So. I need you to come hook up my Jeep. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I need that setup. It works going really, up. really so good. So you're charging while you're driving. Yep. Oh, I got stuff lying all over mine. We don't even want to talk about that. It's so clean. And I still have power, enough power for something else. You yeah. Know, it's a 2000 watt inverter. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're running blenders and everything right. else if you need to, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I love how you mounted the, the Red Arc Red Vision. Can you talk a little bit about how you mounted that and what is that thing? Okay. Uh, the ARB uh, rack has this um, metal bracket he up here. So I use a 67 designed um, arm okay. to mount the uh, Red Arc system. Okay. Why I decided to do do it right here, you're not going to use it when you're driving. At least I'm not going to use it when I'm driving. Yeah. And if I need to check something, I can go on my phone. It's a Bluetooth unit. And um, what I'm running here is just um, camping stuff okay. like my fridge, camping lights. And stuff that I'm not going to be using while driving. Okay. And uh, so this controller w will control the Red Arc system, which is the Red Vision. Yeah. And it'll give me power to the fridge, to lights. Sure. Um, the, the inverter. Yeah. And it and it'll keep, it tells you how much power you still have left in your battery and stuff. And we'll get all to that in the inside. But basically, it's managing that whole system yeah. for you and letting you know what you have left. And that's what it is. It's an electric management yeah. system. Yeah. Well, dude, that's super clean. I love how that's installed. So that's awesome. Uh, okay, what do you got? 
What do you got up here? I, I love those bags. Oh, Step 22. Yeah. I, I love their product. It's really good, good quality. Yeah. It's cool that it fits perfectly. It's right there. In the goose gear. Like it, it was yeah. almost made for it. It wasn't, but it fits perfectly right. at the top. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Man. I got two of them. Yeah. One behind the other and on top of the goose gear uh, system. And this is my fridge slide from also from goose gear. So what fridge do you have in the back here? I got the uh, 50 quart ARB. Okay. This is the classic two. I have the classic one on my JK, and it's been there for, you know, seven years. That's the old blue one, huh? It's the yeah. old blue one. Yeah. So I got the same one, but this is the, the new model, okay. which is metal. Nice. And um, this, I love it. Yeah. I love what Goose Gear did with this uh, yeah. drawer in the bottom. That's super cool. I love the little storage there, and that, that's interchangeable, right? You can swap those out. Yeah. And, and look, uh, what we got here, guys? I'm going to leave a link down below if you have not ordered Marco's cookbook. Okay, uh, I love it back here, buddy, but there's still more to see. Let's go in the back and talk about more wiring and the battery management system and then the stuff you've done on the interior. Let's do it. Back here, I did the Goods Gear 60 Delete platform. Um, it gives me all this space to put uh, stuff on top of it. And it's got these coveys that give me all the storage that I need for my tools. Um, I got some jackets and shoes uh, there. This plate, it also comes up here, which is holding the Red Arc system. Got the uh, Manager 30. This is the controller for the batteries and the and charges all the, the system. And this is the Red Vision system, which is the total vehicle management system. It's got all the fuses for the uh, terminals that I'm using gets connected to that controller so this goes the battery that I'm using it's a lithium 100 amp hour this will take care of my fridge and all my camping stuff um, out here I have the Jackery Explorer 1500 power up my uh, blender when I'm making those salsas and yeah I love this thing um, I got some Philcraft bags I got like a my medicine, uh, some gloves and, and winter stuff in here. Um, I got also some small bags from Fieldcraft. And uh, to protect the doors, when I have boxes or whatever I have up here to protect my doors, I got the thin skins. This is a door protection system and it's super easy to install and super easy to remove. It'll keep your doors uh, protected. Now, let me show you what I did in the front with communications and my dashboard uh, holding system. I really like how you mounted your comms radios up there. What radios are those and how did you mount those guys? Okay, um, these are midline radios. Yeah. For the longest time we use ham radio. Yeah. And I still have my ham radio, but now GMRS is getting more popular. So I got a GMRS unit here. Yeah. And I just kept both radios just in case, you know, if some of the people that comes along don't have a GMRS, well, I have a ham radio yeah. so we can have communications. And I mounted it on an MPS. It's a Mali system that goes on top and around the center console here. Okay. I mounted the radios there and you got some room up here for paperwork or yeah. whatever. How, how did you route all the wires and antennas? Okay, uh, I went from, I went inside this, the behind the mirror. Here, okay. And I dropped the window. So I routed all the wiring to the battery where the fuses are, and on the other side, I ran the antenna wires. Nice. Again, super clean wiring, buddy. It's great. Um, and what have you done on the dash? I have the Vector Off-Road Contour E-Dock, and I'm using 67 Design units to hold my uh, telephone. When I need uh, to go out and bring my iPad, there's a holder there for the iPad. And I also have a holder for my ARB Lynx system monitor. Okay. And what does that one do for you specifically? This is a controller for the lights. Okay. This is a controller for auxiliary lights, like all the KCs, the running lights. Um, and that also controls my compressor. And it's got a pressure control system for the compressor. So I can set the, the target pressure and it'll run the compressor to that to that target pressure nice. when I'm uh, inflating the tires or deflating the tires. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you know, I'm jealous that you have shift paddles, but what uh, what is is that that is your trailer uh, controller up there? Right here, I uh, 
it, it took me a while to figure out where to put the yeah. the, the radar controller, trailer controller. Um, is, this is a Tow Pro, uh, which is it, it's a small unit, and uh, you know I had to measure every every where I wanted to put it. I had to measure to make sure it'll fit. Yeah, and right here it fits perfectly. Yeah, and my logic is that what I'm driving, I can use my finger. Yeah. I really like where you mounted that. I mean, I put mine under the steering wheel, and uh, it's it's okay, but that's a great solution for it. Uh, anything else in the interior we should know about? Yes, this uh, Terra Acoustic uh, speakers. Uh huh. These are awesome. the uh, The JL ha comes with the Alpine system, the Rubica model, at least, and the whole system is perfect except for the mid range speakers. So this company, Terra Acoustics. They design a speaker just for the for the JL and for the Alpine system, and it makes a big, big difference. Nice. Well, you've done great in here, man. Once again, your interior is super clean and well thought out. I love it. Brother, once again, you have built an amazing Overland Thank vehicle. You, I mean, the first one blew my mind. Uh, this one is next level, dude. You've done such a great job. What's left to do on it? Uh, one winch. Okay. I'm gonna get a, a, a platinum 10 yeah. for it pretty soon, and 37s. Okay. I want to go on 37s, and other than that, I think that's that's it. Yeah. Uh, it's got everything that I need, and it's not overbuilt. No. It's perfect. It's, it's perfect. Tastefully done, and you know, on on long adventures that we're doing, uh, to be able to be comfortable, have everything you need, uh, to be able to set up and break down quickly, uh, I think you've checked all those blocks, man. You've done a great job with this. Um, what's the favorite thing you've done on this thing so far? Passing you and Josh on the freeway. <sighs> Stop it, man. That hurts, dude. That hurts. <laughs> I mean, my JK was always back there. Yeah. I, like, Look, guys, uh, Marco's JK was an awesome vehicle, but uh, when we would hit those mountain passes, you were always having to slow down, uh, and I always felt so bad for you, but... Um, now it's the opposite. Now it's like, Marco, slow down, slow down. <laughs> it's been fun. It's been awesome, dude. It's been awesome. Uh, what uh, what adventures are you excited about taking this thing on? Well, next week I'm going to take my whole family out okay. camping somewhere. Yeah. Um, we don't know where yet, but that, I can't wait for that one. And there are a couple things that you and I are going to be doing before the end of the year. And next year is going to be amazing. Yeah. Hopefully Alaska this time. Alaska. We we had to put it off because of COVID, uh, but I think it's finally time to get Alaska on the calendar. And man, yes. you're ready in this I'm vehicle. Ready. You're ready. So that's awesome. Well, buddy, I, uh, I I'm so glad that four and a half years ago uh, we met right here at this right spot, here. man. I mean uh, that as uh, it's been life changing. I mean. Who would have thought that we would have been the places we've been and the friendships that we've built and all the amazing memories, man. Oh, brother, the friendship that came out of that first, uh, that first uh, Jeep walk around. Yeah. Dude. It's awesome, dude. Thanks, buddy. I look forward to many, many, many more adventures. Absolutely. Guys, I hope, uh, I hope you've enjoyed hanging out with us today. We sure have had a blast out here just laughing and uh, we're going to go explore a little bit. If you want to see more of uh, Marco's uh, adventures and some of his cooking. He has his own YouTube channel, so go check that out at Overland X. It's actually Marco Hernandez, yeah. or Overland X. Uh, and uh, if you have not been over to trailrecon.com, make sure you head over there. we got lots of gear and some merchandise. And uh, I'm ready, dude. Let's go have some fun. That's good. Thanks for watching, guys.